Hi everyone, I wanted to do a quick video on some charms. I'm making some origami owl, origami owl style charms um, for a, a, something that I'm coming up with for my pocket letters and I call it um, pocket lockets. So um, if you've ever seen the origami owl style um, charms they come in like a little clear um, locket style type thing they're really cute and I thought wouldn't it be really cool to sort of adapt that to the pocket letter style thing um, I've never made a pocket letter before but I'm working on some pocket letters right now and I just came up with the idea of pocket lockets um, in the origami owl style um, so I'm making me some charms to go in my pocket letters uh, that are going to be with this style of embellishment included in it. So I have two sets of um, charms that I made. I guess I'll just separate them real quick. So this is the first set I made. Um, and this is more like for... A pocket letter for you know something like a little girl um, something that celebrates girlhood like sugar and spice and everything nice that kind of thing and so I made these with just white um, the Scopey polymer clay that I showed you guys before and those are the apple barrel paints I've been using in a couple of deco arts I mean folk art uh, paints metallics and I'm using this um, ceramic coat white but you can use any white this just happened to be the one that I grabbed and I have a couple of nail polishes um, clear sparkle and sort of like a coppery rose gold color so I've been playing with that and a couple of you know embellies over here sparkles and gems so for the girl I made a cute little dress hopefully you can see it it's got sparkles on it and a couple of go coats of uh, Mod Podge glaze I made this little bunny rabbit so this one is just all things I think little girls would like Some little books girls love to read could be a journal or diary they like to do that too I made a little fingernail polish charm with clear pink and rose gold this is a little ice cream charm Neapolitan with strawberry vanilla and chocolate And this is a little compact a little um, eyeshadow thing with a mirror piece on it and then there's like a little coloring book page with three crayons and a little colored um, out of the lines thing to show you like a little kid did it and then I just put three bling in it so my charms are I think quite a bit bigger than the origami owl charms but the the idea was that you want to see the charms I think their charms are gorgeous but they're so tiny and they come in these tiny little lockets and this is you know not that these are all handmade out of clay so that's the little girl oops and I just lost the nail polish on the floor let me get that real quick. I've got tons of stuff around me, tons of supplies, so <clears throat> hopefully you can see that. I'm trying to get it in the light. Okay, that's that one. And then I did an Easter set of charms. Okay, 
going to show you one by one. This one is the Jesus with inside the shape of a fish. Sort of connoting the miracle of the loaves and the fishes, right? Fisher of men. This is what Easter is all about. Uh, the cross on Calvary, so it's a crown of thorns with three nails. This is uh, the New Testament, sort of the Last Supper with the, the bread and the wine. Body broken for our sins. Wine is the New Covenant. Some praying hands. A church. Of course, the Holy Book. I don't know if you can see that. The Bible. This cute little lamb slain from the foundation of the world for the remission of our sins, of course. And this cross, which I gilded with a real 24 karat gold leafing. So it was my first time doing that. And I missed a couple of spots, but working with the gold leaf was a little bit tricky, so I have to get used to that. And then these are just some pearl bling that I had. So let's give you another final look. Most of the charms, because my charms are quite a bit bigger than theirs, I think. I've never seen them in real life. Um... I'm going to only put like five to seven in normal everyday style pocket lockets. But for the Easter one, of course, I put eight because eight is the number of Christ. And it is also, um, it signifies renewal, rebirth. So seven, the earth was finished in seven days. So seven connotes completeness. Things being done, being finished. Jesus on the cross said it's finished. He fulfilled the law and the letter. But he rose again, so he's the number eight. Um, and eight is rebirth, renewal. So I put eight charms in his. And no, it's not numerology. Um, the Bible numbers are very significant in the Bible. So that's why I chose those numbers. So that one just fell on the floor, the praying hands. So, obviously, these are going to be slipping all over the place. So, let me get that. You got to be really careful with these miniature charms because they will fall. And trying to locate them can be next to impossible. Um, I did these three nails individually and one of them fell and yeah it, it was just pure luck that I was able to locate it again because I didn't want to have to make another one and bake just one nail so I also um, did this one this is going to be like a Mother's Day set of charms and there's only seven here so I figured I'd try to um, at least let you see me kind of like paint these I'll be right back because my time is about to run out what we have here is seven charms one of them so I already started painting them and then I thought well why don't I just like sort of film it so this is a rose um, signifying the flowers that moms get on Mother's Day the heart of course heart of love most mothers have this is going to be a box of chocolates it's a box with nine little chocolates this is a necklace moms get expensive jewelry on Mother's Day they always get something that's kind of like you know helps them understand their number one so a number one mom charm in something sweet like a, a cake or something like that cupcakes or whatever so I drew a cake I mean I made a cake out of clay and then this is going to be symbolize money so moms get lots of money on Mother's Day so I already put like three or four coats of metallic red on here um, 
So let's just kind of see how this goes as I'm painting these. I've got my water here, napkin here, and I've got these three very small brushes that I'm using. So, and I'll mostly mainly, mainly be using these two small brushes. And I'm not sure, if I'll, I'll probably use this one to glaze it. The colors, hmm, I just will decide in the moment. So, let's see if I can get this done fast. And I also want to put a couple of bling pieces on this. So this might be a little bit tricky. Uh, maybe I'll just put it on here. And I'm just using dots and dots of paint. Like, that's probably way too much. But I'll use this as my little palette. I'm trying to mix up a little bit of something. For the cake here, just a really light golden cake color. And this doesn't have to be perfect. Um, the one thing I like about like little charms and things is that they're never perfect can always turn your palette around and don't forget to get uh, all the sides that are going to be visible and that makes sense um, I'm, I'm not going to do the back of these pieces because it doesn't matter to me that much the back can stay sort of uh, just flat and I'm going to dot that in and come with a little bit more You know, around the edges of the cake, there's always a little bit of darkness. It's always a little bit darker, especially on the bottom, where it's been nearest the heating element of the oven. So just keep it, you know, logical. Paint. So you can kind of see that. Let me move this over here so it won't be. In front of the camera too much. And then this, let me see, I had some gold paint over here. I was trying to cover it up so it wouldn't dry out. I'm not sure if that worked. But we'll see. just pull 
gold touch on these leaves. And keep it simple. You know how they do that. Those roses for mom always look like they've been dipped in gold or something like that. That charm is pretty much done. Sorry if I'm bumping the camera, but it is inevitable. That's kind of cute. Looks like those cheesy charms that you usually see, which is what I like about the cheesy charms. They're cute. Now for the chocolate. We're going to do like a Tiffany blue style teal. I'm just going to use, again, you just need dots of paint for these small charms. I got a little red on it because I was a little bit, um, throwing the paint around when I was painting the red rose so you have to be careful with that and some of these colors um, are a little more translucent than others so you, you'll have to let some of these layers dry. Oops, sorry. And it's not the easiest thing in the world to paint and be on camera. And actually, I'll have to check this footage to make sure this stuff is actually in camera so you want to use the smallest paintbrush you can find but even then as you can see you'll still get paint like sort of over everywhere so I'm gonna let that dry and actually what I'll probably do is uh, finish painting these I just wanted to give you an idea of me painting these um, it takes a lot of detail work so I'll probably finish painting these and come back because my time is running out all right bye okay I'm back and I finished painting all of these now of course these were baked already and I kept them kept them uh, stuck to the tile because that makes them easier to paint obviously so yeah so there's the red rose with a tiny little gem in the middle. There's the box of chocolates. There's the metallic heart. The piece of cake with a couple of strawberries. The necklace with its gem, the money, and the number one mom. So hopefully you can see all of that really well. So what I did was I shaped it on this tile and wherever you see it, that's where it was shaped at. So put it on there, shaped it with the clay, um, baked it in the oven on my cardboard tile. I think I showed it to you, but I just bake it on a piece of cardboard.
I have uh, some baking cardboard tiles, but this just shows you. I'll put it in the oven like that. And then when it's done, I take it out of the oven with the cardboard because the cardboard um, cools down much quicker than you obviously wouldn't touch a ceramic tile as soon as it comes out of the oven. But you can touch the cardboard pretty soon after. I just take it out with an oven mitt and then let it cool down for a couple of minutes and then I can pick up the cardboard and bring it to my craft space and let the tile and the clay cool down. And then I'll use my paints and stuff on it. So after um, you finish painting, you just take your blade and scrape all of this off. And then I'll come and scrape that off. Well, I mean, I'll, I guess I can show you how. And if you have any flashing, you know, you can just cut that off. That's just like excess glue or gloss or varnish that sticks out. And you can just easily cut that off. And you have a cute little piece of cake with two cute little strawberries for your charm. This one has a lot of flashing, and I'll take my X-Acto knife and cut all of this flashing off of it. Um, and what I'll do after that is put a little talcum powder on the table and run the back through it. I think I just popped off one of the little gems on my necklace. So, oh, two of them. I'll have to fix that. I might leave that there. Just have to put those back on. So money charm. Whoa. It's the number one mom charm. So um, I'm hitting the these gems with my knife and it's knocking the gems off so I will have to put some glue down and glue those back on which is not a problem um, you know don't stuff like that happens to you it, it will happen it's not a big deal you just get some glue and you put those back on so I will do that and I will come back and assemble my charms alright see you in a bit Okay, I'm back. I wanted to show you the charms assembled in their pretty much their final pocket locket um, style. So some of them I did, you can do round or, you know, I like the rectangular ones because they, they fit nicely inside the pockets and they actually can take the place of one of the ATCs in the pocket locket. Um, and I will sign the back of all of these. So this is, yeah, this is my idea for pocket letters. A cute little pocket locket to go inside of it with all of your handmade charm treasures. So the thing about the um, pocket locket is that, yeah, all of the charms will be handmade. No, um, you know, poured resin and no store-bought embellishments and things like that this is all the work of the artist's own hand so if you are interested in this and I hope you are and you're not confident that you can work with clay I mean just give it a shot and create a pocket locket for yourself so the one thing about this circular pocket locket so here here it is now this one is almost done I still have to put the finishing edge around the top it has a bail has a paper on the back and I can cover this with triple thick or something like that to make it nice and glossy but the charms have been glued in 
and I think it's really beautiful. The one thing about the origami owl charms is that, like, once you put the charms and stuff in, like, they rattle around like a shaker card almost, and to me, that kind of defeats the purpose of wearing a charm necklace, because some of the charms can get flipped over and turned over on their backside, and, it, and the backside is like some un finished piece and you want to be able to see all the charms that you picked out uh, those charms are so small anyway like you you know you want to be able to see them so that's why I glued the charms down so that no matter what happens you'll always be able to see the pretty charms so here's the charm for the char the pocket locket for a little girl so if you were doing like a pocket letter with a girly theme you know you would put in this pocket locket and it would be cute it would be a keepsake that the person you know you thread a, a necklace or some yarn or something around it leather cord and they can put this charm on their backpack or put it in you know a favorite book or wear it like a necklace or hang it on the wall and it's just a lovely keepsake with all of these beautiful things there's like a a uh, plastic cover on the front to protect the, the charms that are on the inside but it will be you know this beautiful reminder they can even just keep it in the pocket letter just keep the pocket locket in there or if you know you're so inclined you can r rip it open and rip out rip out all the charms and use them in pieces or send them to someone else and they're just glued in with some Aileen's tacky glue so you could theoretically just peel them off and use them if you want so I think that's really cute uh, the circle I measured it before but it ended up being a little bit too tight for the pocket I guess after you know all the paint and stuff goes on it it kind of bulked up just a tiniest bit more and wasn't able to fit so if I want to do a circular pocket again I'll have to make sure it's just a tad smaller than this and this is all made out of cardboard paper clay and paint and a little bit of metal that I twisted for the bale this is the second one the Easter one so the bale is this way so it would hang this way and someone can put this in a Bible they can put this with their Bible journaling stuff they can put this on a prayer wall or in a war room or carry it around with them or put it on a backpack whatever um, so this is how this looks and I put the little black finishing edge on here but what I still will do um, the origami owl lockets all have like gemstones around the edge so I'm gonna put some pearlescent sort of gems around this edge to finish it off and that'll be that one to hang that way and again you'd put a cord or something with it and then this one is the one you saw me painting finally finished I put a gold border around it painted it gold on the back it's got the bale on the top and this is what those charms look like all finished and again you put a gold cord or maybe a bling cord or whatever you want and the person can hang this you know from their phone they can put hang it from their purse like a purse charm they can do whatever they want with it but it's a unique piece of art handmade by you you know the artist that they can keep as a keepsake now these are not I don't know if I said it already I mean these are made out of paper so you know they're not weatherproof you would have to protect these like you would protect any sort of delicate art piece and since these are my unique creations I would put my name on it and I will keep track of the series so this I made first these charms this is my pocket locket number one so I'll keep track of that this was my second one this is my pocket locket number two this is my pocket locket number three and I'm currently working on pocket locket number four so I hope you enjoyed this look at my pocket lockets and I hope you guys make them too and include them in your pocket letters and if you do I'd love for you to put uh, a video link or whatever to show me how you're making your pocket lockets and remember make sure they're handmade charms on the inside and 
you know, this is just made out of cardboard and, and recycled paperboard from packaging. Um, and the charms are just made out of clay, uh, glue, uh, clay and there's just, you know, craft paint. And, and look how awesome and pretty and creative you can be with just that. So have fun making your pocket lockets. Don't forget to share. Uh, and if you do make it, you know, shout out and and you know, re, you know, put a link to this video so Pete, so everybody else can kind of see how to make one too if they want to make one. All right, thank you. I'll come back another time and show you an entire completed pocket letter with a pocket locket. And I guess as I continue to make these, I'll do different updates on different pocket letters with my pocket lockets. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. God bless. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.